I know, high rocks is often seen as a running sport. But nowadays, many athletes train in affiliates where long threshold sessions or interval sessions are common and the actual running volume remains rather low. So in this video, I will explain a new study we are setting up right now. One group, group A, will train predominantly running, while another group, group B, will be doing mostly strength and functional movements. And we want to see if there is a best way to train Hirox. The goal of this video is to convince you to partake in this study because the more people enter the study, the higher the validity is. So without further ado, let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, welcome back to another What Science video. My name is Gomar, I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology. And my goal now is to bring some of the science that I learned back to you guys. So if you have ever watched a high rocks competition or done one yourself, you've heard a lot or a lot of people saying that it's simply a running competition. If you're good at running, you're good at high rocks. Well, I want to uh, caveat that a little bit here. For example, you see here the, the splits the running splits as well as the functional uh, fitness or the functional stations splits of an elite high rocks racer and you see that usually let's say he's doing 60 minutes of racing 50 percent is going to be running and 50 percent are going to be the functional station so that's already one thing there is actually a lot of time spent doing the functional stations but maybe more important is the trickle down effect from the functional stations on the running for example, here you see the oxygenation, the muscle oxygenation of an elite hyroxer that we tested in the lab or in the gym. And he was doing a specific workout consisting of running, functional fitness movements like sled push, devil press and so on, and then also back into a running in different intervals. And what we see here is that there are a lot of fluctuations in muscle oxygen, in relative muscle oxygen, between the different stations and between the running. So your body has to be really capable of handling these fluctuations in muscle oxygen and be able to do that compromised running. It's really not that easy for your body to cope with these different blood distributions that are coming, for example, from a heavy sled push where most of the blood is needed in the posterior chain and then go straight into a run. I think many people who are watching this video who have done the lunges as well as, for example, the sled pushes and then go back into a run have experienced this. And this much of this has to do with muscle oxygenation. You decrease your muscle oxygen during those heavy load functional fitness stations and then you go into a run where you have to flush out this. So it's something that you have to train specifically and it's way more than simply being good at a 5K run. So this is quite intriguing to me and this is something what sparked my interest of doing this study because I know that if you open or if you have an uh, Hyrox affiliate, you have more and more Hyrox affiliates now, you have people coming into the gym and they do four to five times per week a specific workout that is Hyrox or an, an endurance uh, interval session that uses most of the time functional movements. Also sometimes a bit of running, but most of the time spent is doing functional movements. And my question is, okay, is this actually a good transfer to overall Hyrox performance, right? Or would it be better to just simply run 80% of your time and do a little bit of strength on the side. So that's exactly the setup we want to do in this study, in this remote study. I will get to all the details. Now we have one group and I call them high rocks running. Four out of five sessions will be running. Different intensities, uh, interval sessions, uh, fast interval sessions, long, slow aerobic sessions such as uh, zone two. And then one day per week will be strength and then followed by some kind of an AMRAP or a longer workout that uses the functional movements that are often seen in Hyrox. And then the group B, I call this affiliate or Hyrox affiliate, will do kind of the opposite. They will do one running session, Usually it's going to be zone two or some uh, intervals as well. And then on the other side, four out of five sessions will be in the gym, right? Affiliate training where you do uh, different styles of functional movements, different styles of uh, AMRAPs, um, high intensity workouts, but also low intensity workouts using functional movements. So we really are meticulously 
programming this because the goal of this all is to have the same training load between group A and group B. That's obviously crucial. If you have different training loads, then it doesn't really make sense. So we are plotting out every session. We are um, estimating the intensity that is needed to do that session as well as the duration. And if you add all of them together, we hope to have the same uh, training load or the same trim where I've talked about before in uh, previous videos. So that would be the, the setup. And then the question is, okay, how do you test this, right? Because we also want to do a test week before and after the eight weeks of training. And here it becomes pretty crucial to use the right tests. So if you have some comments or if you want to help us with building out the tests, please put it in the comment section below. It really helps us out to, to better understand or to be, to be sure to use the right test. But this is what we came up with now. The first day or one of the tests for sure will be a Hyrox, a full Hyrox simulation in your category, open or the pro weights. That's for sure. We have to include that. But we also want to know which parts or which aspects of Hyrox are going to be improved by our training. So we also do a 5k run, flat out 5k run, both groups do that. And then we have two more functional fitness tests. Test 3 would be our classic test that we use a lot also in other uh, studies that we have done, other remote studies. It will be a 7 minute MRAP of burpees, so as many burpees as you can, and then straight into a 1k row. So it's an, an endurance test, but you still use the functional movements. Uh, it's important to do mostly endurance tests here. And then the last test, what, which we want to include in the seven day testing week, will be Karen, the CrossFit workout Karen, simply 150 wall balls for time. Very straightforward, very functional, I would say, and a good, let's say, transfer to Hyrox. Again, if you have some other ideas that we could include in this testing week or where we have to sub other uh, tests, please put them in the comment section. Happy to learn. So those kind of tests we will do before and after this eight weeks of uh, training that will be group A and group B. And then we want to see which aspects of Hyrox improve and if a whole Hyrox simulation can also be improved one way or another. The schedule is pretty straightforward. So we start all together on, let me check here, October 13th. So Monday, October 13th. I think it will be approximately eight to nine days from when this video is published. Then we have our testing week, right? The full week of testing. Then we have eight weeks of actual training all together, different groups. And then we have our post testing uh, at the end of December. So right before Christmas, you will have your results and you can happily enjoy Christmas dinner for sure. So a couple more things to explain here. First of all, what do you get out of this, right? Like, why would you actually do this study? Um, you get 10 weeks of science-backed training. So we really try to meticulously program your training so that you are progressively overloading in or running or using the functional movements, depending on which group you are. By the way, you are randomly assigned to any group, right? So you cannot bribe me to put uh, you in a specific group. I don't take bribes, at least not below 5,000 euros, uh, but anyway, it should be randomly allocated. You will have measurable results, proven measurable results, and pretty fun, you will be included into a Discord group so we can talk about this, we can have a, some kind of a community, also share some pictures, so share some videos. It's always super fun to talk with like-minded people about this. You will certainly also learn a lot about your own body, about your own training uh, by doing this study. What we need from you, because you also have uh, something to do here, you would have to log at least 80% of your sessions. So four out of five sessions per week, let's say you have something else to do or you're sick for a couple of days, that's okay. We just want you to log approximately 80% or more, obviously best would be more of your sessions. You would have to do the pre and the post testing, obviously, otherwise we cannot really use your results. And you should have at least some experience in CrossFit or Hyrox, we say here six months of CrossFit or Hyrox experience because you have to be used to all the functional movements and so on. And the programming will be not super beginner level. It would rather be uh, intermediate to advanced uh, programming so you can actually progress. If you are interested in joining this study, please simply click the link the first link in the description or scan the QR code that is pop popping up right now. It's completely for free. You will learn a lot and you will help the science of Hyrox. 
Cool, I hope that you get a good grasp of what the study actually entails. If you want to learn more on how we did previous studies, similar, like these similar remote studies, in more in the CrossFit space, click the video that is popping up right now. Don't forget to subscribe to the study and see you in the next video. Ciao.